When browsing the internet, you'll often come across shortened URLs, like the Buffly link displayed on screen. But you can never be 100% sure where these links will send you to. So let's have a look at how we can use PowerShell to figure out the end target of these links. Let's start by invoking a web request against the Buffly link on screen, and we'll use basic parsing. Note that this is only required when using Windows PowerShell version 5.1 and below, as it's now the standard on PowerShell Core 6.0 and above. When we first run this, we'll get a TLS error, and that's because by default, PowerShell uses TLS 1.0, but many sites now require TLS 1.1 or 1.2. So we can tell PowerShell to use TLS 1.2 by running the command shown here, and if we rerun our web request, we'll end up getting the desired response. Now within that object we got from invoke web request, we can actually see the URL that ended up responding. You can explore more properties of this web object, but the one we're looking for is this absolute URL property that I've displayed on screen. And as you can see, that Buffly link ended up going to the GitHub repo, all of these TechSnips demonstration scripts. So now let's start building a function that we can use to quickly expand URLs as we need to. We'll make this an advanced function by specifying the commandlet binding, and then we'll start by adding a parameter. So this will be our URI itself, and note that I'm casting this parameter as a URI object. This tells PowerShell that we want to ensure that the value being passed in is valid. But a lot of people don't actually refer to these links as URIs, and you'll notice that through this demonstration I've been referring to them as URLs. So I'll list URL as an alias, and then this function's not going to do much if we don't actually provide a URL. So I'll specify that it has to be mandatory, meaning if we run this function without specifying one, we'll be prompted for it. And as a bit of usability, I'll also specify that we can accept values from the pipeline, both just via the pipeline and via property name. We'll start with a begin block, and this is where we'll set our TLS protocol type to TLS 1.2. We'll put this in the begin block so it's only done once, regardless of how many items we're processing. Next, we'll do a process block where the actual bulk of our work is carried out. And inside there, we'll loop through each URI specified. The square brackets next to the URI parameter indicates that we can take an array of links. And for each link, we'll invoke our web request again and return the absolute URI. Now if I import this function into my session and specify a URL against it, we'll see output the resulting URL. In this case, that Twitter link linked off to a TechSnips blog article. Now let's test that our pipeline input's working and I'll specify two URLs and I'll pipe them into expand URI. When I run that, I'll get two resulting links out. So that's been expanding shortened links using PowerShell. Thank you for watching.